Greetings, science fiction and fantasy enthusiasts. Do you read books? Do you watch films? Do you hate deodorant? Then welcome to our podcast. You're listening to No Deodorant in Outer Space with Ryan Sean O'Reilly. Now, let's get started. I was in that ultimate moment of terror that is the beginning of life. It is nothing. Simple, hideous nothing. The final truth of all things is that there is no final truth. Truth is what's transitory. It's human life that is real. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of No Yodern in Outer Space. My name is Ryan Sean O'Reilly, and joining me once again is Dave Wilkinson. Woohoo! Way too loud. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. D- Dustin Decline. Yes, sir. Welcome back, boys. We're we are recording uh, once again to do the second half of our episode. We're going to be covering um, Altered States, the movie. It was directed by Ken Russell, and the movie came out in I believe it was 1980 and starred William Hurt. So uh, before we begin, I think uh, Will had uh, a little. <laughs> announcement yeah this is important my mom sent me an email today she's turning 70 this next year this year and she's rented a series of cottages at a resort in michigan for all of her five kids okay all for seven kids really if you count all the kids to come come and visit her and and for a week or a long weekend in august and she sent this very long sweet email saying there's like three cabins and a lodge and Here's a list of them, and I've paid for half of it, so just you can pay your share, and just try and decide amongst yourselves where you want to stay. And so I have a lot of siblings, and so I sent her a list of demands. <laughs> so, as which, one does, which I will send <laughs> now in text form to Ryan and Dustin, so they know that I'm not making this up. Um, to date, so these are your demands to your mom for your mom's party. <laughs> her mom's party for her party and for her, her herself. In the preface, her, it, well, yeah, the preface, her, it, like the resort that we're going to, it's an, it's on like Lake Michigan, and it's just, it's like it's like five cabins and houses, and the, and the page it's a discount of the pastor. There's a pastor, dis, there's a pastor discounts for a pastor, you get a discount there, and there's 18 holes of golf free every day. Okay. So two things I don't do is go to church and golf. So if that was. A point of contention right there on this free trip <laughs> that my mom invited me and my family on. <laughs> what a tyrant she is. So <laughs> here are the demands that I sent her. I think I just sent you guys the list, but I'm going to read my demands to my mother. These for- are uh, Wilkes demands to his mother for his mother's party. <laughs> nice and she- slow, Wilkes. Nice and slow. Demands. Yeah. The best cottage, period. Not to be in a cottage next to my sister Kristen, who has a gluten intolerance. We respect gluten in our family. <laughs> Nobody asked me to golf. You know, neither you or me want me to golf. We want to bring dogs, not our dog, just dogs. <laughs> we want do- we watch dogs for extra money in the summer. Thanks in advance. Room service is a must. We need approval of menus and assurance that service will be prompt. A guarantee the help will not look me or my family in the eyes. A bowl of M and M's. All colors welcome. We want the pastor's discount. We are high priests in several churches. We would also like to perform a renewal of our wedding vows during the trip, <laughs> making it all about us, and please don't ruin our magical re-wedding weekend, you peasants. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. See you there. Happy birthday, Mom. But I do want to take over this weekend and make it all about me. <laughs> I'm just, this is how I start with a group email. and Group text or group email? Group email. They're they're in their seventies. They so. are peasants. Yeah. They are. No, but like these family trips, my mom my mom is always not always, but she will often do these very generous things and like rent a house and tell all her kids to come visit there. And it, it turns into a fucking free for all fight that like lasts for like <laughs> Years like we're still, the last time she did this, she rented a house on the ocean in South Carolina, just outside of Charleston, eight bedroom house, and like my sister got married that same weekend, and all you can talk about is how <laughs> my brothers Joe and John got into a fight that lasted the whole weekend, and it started started when they were both drunk, <laughs> and my brother John found some incredible Hulk styrofoam gloves and put them on his hands, and my other brother Joe is like. Go ahead and hit me. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to hit you. And he, do it. And he hits him with the Incredible Hulk glove in the face. And they're like, whether Joe like staggers back and goes, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you hit me. You hit me. You're my brother. 
And that was the whole night. And this day, like, Brother Joe's like, that was the worst weekend of my life. Mom fucking screwed me over. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, family. Family, so, family, family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that beautiful house in the ocean, you got totally screwed when you're, you baited your older brother to hit you with foam Hulk gloves. Oh, my God. You well, respect me. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're having quite a fun time here. Yeah, sorry. Reminiscing. <laughs> It's and great. we can uh, get back to another family here, yeah. the the family, the dysfunctional family in, in this uh, work. Let's just go around the horn real quick and just say any kind of opening comment to summarize your thoughts on the movie. I'll start with Dustin this time after Wilk's uh, story there. Sorry. Just any, just like a one sentence summary about your thoughts on the movie, just sum it up. You know, I, I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it, you know, it, it summed up, you know, the story much better than the book did. And it's obvious that, you know, his screenwriting talents were evident in this film. Okay. And Wilk? I love this movie. Yeah. I watched it at 1 o'clock in the morning. I didn't fall asleep. I wish I had more drugs when I watched it. It was good. <laughs> and I'll say, pitting ordained Hollywood royalty against a self-indulgent alt outsider. The result? A perfect clash of expression that elevates this already superior book material into something even better. A rarity. So that's my uh, opening salvo there. So this movie was directed by Ken Russell. Ken Russell was born July 3rd, 1927. He died November 27th, 2011. Loser. We actually covered Mr. Russell in a previous podcast <laughs> when we covered Layer of the White Worm. That was in Season 3, Episode 5. So listeners can go back and listen to that episode if they want to hear like more about the biography of this director. We kind of get in depth there about how he started off in documentaries. He has an uh, affinity for music, especially uh, classical music. He, he's He's also known for starting controversies. Wilk went into that in great detail last time. I did? Wilk and Rick, where he upset the, like, the Strauss family by the film that he made, and they pulled the music rights from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, and, and that kind of reminded me of this film, because in this film... The author actually wrote the screenplay. He's known for being a screenwriter, like we said, and he made a move to pull his name off it, and he he changed it so he got credit under a pseudonym. He got credit under like his like uh, a combination of his real name, and I think under Sidney Aaron. So he was so upset with what Ken Russell was doing with with his precious script. Really. I know. Isn't that hilarious? Because yeah. I feel like it's. A, I mean, if you read the book, like the dialogue is just almost exact. You know, like it, yeah, it was, it, it was a good yeah. movie. Ken, yeah, I, I would agree. And there's Ken that. Russell. I think said that it, it, it was all there. Yeah, it and was I, all there. That I, he didn't it didn't cut it. But I think what what I could tell from my research is that supposedly now pa- Patty Chayefsky he died like like uh, right after the movie came out. He it supposedly didn't see it, and he purposely didn't see it because he was so frustrated with the effort that he when people would ask him about it, he wanted to be able to say, "I don't know, I didn't see it." He's so tortured, so <laughs> tortured. But, so supposedly some people have said that they think that Chayefsky was upset because what Ken Russell did was looked at the dialogue and made the actor say it in a much faster fashion um, and, and <laughs> had them like kind of say things quickly. And there are scenes where they're kind of like just spouting things off real quickly. I found it effective dealing I, with uh, <laughs> all the technical jargon. After reading the torturous book, yeah, I think the you know speeding up the pace a little bit of the dialogue this, was needed. <laughs> this kind of validated the book for me too. Like, I mean, my my review, the if not for the movie, I would have like been pissed that I read the book. Yeah, yeah. So I would agree. The, the the book, the movie did validate the book, <laughs> and it okay. It seemed like a clearer vision. Yeah, completely. Yeah. He's a screenwriter. It, yeah, it was the fulfillment of his idea. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, what what a do? She didn't like them. No, whatever. <laughs> There's yeah. people that say that um the screenplay did have a, a lot of depth and that it was better than the movie. I don't know. I haven't read the screenplay. I know uh, in the research that the author was uh, he was given a million dollars for the screenplay and he was coming off of his Academy Award win for Network, so he was kind of at the uh, crescendo or the apex of his career when this came about. But I I think. We talked about we touched upon this in the in the previous episode where we talked about Ken Russell, but Russell and um, uh, Chayefsky, it was described that they got into a row, mm-hmm. you know, over this. I don't know if that meant they got into a physical altercation or what, but my take, like I said in my quote, is that kind of Chayefsky was kind of like ordained Hollywood royalty, mm-hmm. and Russell was the outsider coming from England. This was his first uh, American film. Yeah, but didn't something like 26 directors pass on it or That's something? That's what like Russell the rumor, claimed. Yeah. Russell yeah, like, claimed that. Nobody wanted to touch this. 
uh, you know, Chayefsky and, kept getting pissed. And yeah. At some point, I think he even he tried to get Russell fired, but it would, they were already too deep into the production yeah, to do yeah. it. But doesn't that sound like the artist, like, uh, you know, uncompromising to his vision, you know, and like, yeah. oh my goodness, nobody wants to work with this guy. And they found this, found Russell. Well, and, and, and Chayefsky's coming off of all these Academy yes. wins, so he's feeling like people need to listen to yeah, him. Yeah, he's got this he's got, capital. He's valid. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Uh, Roger Ebert, I noted, gave this three and a half stars, which was his highest rating for all of Russell's films, including uh, a zero for The Devils. Um, <laughs> but uh, supposedly this this film is the film, I think, that burned uh, Russell with Hollywood, and he became, uh, one of the quotes, a pariah yeah, he was, after this. Oh, he's kind of one and done, right, with the, you know, Hollywood, you know, after, yeah. after that. Yeah. Like, that was his, his opportunity and... You know, yeah. I know that he, was him. he said that working on this film, I think, was great. He enjoyed going out to Hollywood and, mm-hmm. and interacting with the people there. And he was, he said, and this film, that money wasn't an issue. Like his previous films yeah. over in England, he's like, yeah, no one ever questioned my budget with this film. But he's also dealing with his demons, right? There's something that said he was, you know, drinking every day and he was drunk on the set a lot. You Russell? Know? Yeah, I think, absolutely. I, mean, okay, I just put a list up. This movie can't, okay, well, it was 1980, but like, here are the best pictures for that that, that year um, for 1981, which is the year afterwards. Ordinary people. People, coal miner's daughter the elephant man raging bull and tess and if you're a teenager or a kid and this is where you're the most impressionable what are you gonna remember more altered states or the elephant man or ordinary people i mean like it, this wasn't a great cinematic film that someone awards but it's it's gonna stick in your consciousness you know what i, I think a good point. i read that they pushed the release i think they want maybe russell or something they, they wanted a summer release which would be less competitive for them and yeah. the release got pushed up to christmas yeah, they opened this on christmas yeah. day like, oh. that's unheard of. Yeah. Any, you know, no, like, this is not a, what a yeah, yeah, a w- worse time to, to push this, like this movie. S- summer, come on, 1981 summer drive-in movie yeah. Or, yeah. or Halloween. Like, Halloween. you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The the opening weekend it only made one hundred seventy four thousand. This is back in nineteen eighty. The budget was fifteen million. The box office, according to I think Wikipedia, was nineteen million. Hmm. But I, I think it wasn't. It you know it, maybe it picked up sales later. I think yeah. initially it wasn't. It didn't it's do. It's got to be a cult classic. I feel yeah, people, right. yeah. people like this movie. I mean, yeah. like I've heard about it for years. I never saw it. I, I, it's on my list of movies to watch. That's why I was so eager to do this because I, I've had altered states on a list of like horror movies you got to see and. You know, yeah, it was something that just would come up all yeah. the, all the time when, when you're looking through these type of movies, and it was something like for whatever reason you, uh, you passed on, or you know, like, it, but it was there. And it's it a was de- my- it's a debut film for William Hurt, yes. I believe, and it's well, also for uh, Drew Barrymore. Yeah, she right, did, right. I think E. T. After this, Good yeah. For- it's got heart and soul. It's got cool effects yeah. and acting yeah. and over the top stuff. I mean, like, do you guys ever see Scanners? I never. Yeah, heard absolutely. It. I love yeah. it. I don't know. I don't think I've seen it. I, oh, I, Michael Ironside. Yeah, it's an amazing film. I mean, that came out like in eighty or eighty one too, yeah. as well. And like, I remember I saw that movie as a kid, and then Wayne's World referenced it, and when they came out like in the nineties. But I remember I watched the movie like, in the afternoon on Channel Twenty, a UHF station, and like I was like twelve or thirteen years old, and like I'll never forget that movie where people's heads are exploding, yeah, and like it's a classic. It's, it's that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. way. I mean, like I'm just saying like. Altered States, that same kind of memorable, sticky, horror, over-the-top movie that, I mean, the guy should be proud of it. I mean, it, it has great dialogue, but it has, like, insane cinematography, too. I, I, I like know. this. Um, I, I think... I in when we did the last episode on Ken Russell, I knew he was a controversial director. We watched The Layer of the White Worm. I didn't think that film was that crazy. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, this to me is <laughs> way better than Layer of the White Worm. I, like, I can coherent. see, I can see this yeah. is like this is one of his best. Fi- this is probably his best film. It's the one I like this one way better. It's coherent. He like you yeah. can tell he tried hard. Yeah. Layer of the White Worm. It was like kind of over the top in a, yeah. in a different way too. But I I I like Ken Russell. I like his. It's similar style. in like. Um, like the the trippy scenes in Layer of the White Worm are similar to the trippy scenes in this one. I think they even use some stock footage from um, they, Dante's yeah. Inferno. And it, actually, interesting little uh, side note. But uh, if you saw, I texted you guys the cover for the first oh, God Godflesh Flesh album yeah, yeah. is a still frame from Absolutely. this movie. Well, it's funny because yeah. Layer of the which Layer- is a great band. I saw them live with Dola a couple yeah. years ago. I can't re- not kind of at lunch. I think Layer of the White Worm was my, was my worst reviewed book on the podcast. But mm-hmm. I liked it. very similar. The book was not great. The source material was bad. It could have been better. Mm-hmm. I mean, great author, obviously, but like Bram Stoker. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like he didn't really. I mean, like these are two films where he kind of improved upon the actual source material, which is I feel uh, similar. Yeah, I, I think he did improve on the original material. And I, this is one of the rare cases, I think, where the, the movie is better than I, I would definitely agree. I, you know, I'm thinking yeah. about that. Like, it, you obviously know his skill as a, a screenwriter. And then, you know, Russell Russell has some sk- skill as a director. And, uh, you know, it, I think it is a, a very good effort. 
I feel um, like this was a perfect fit for Russell. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the, I mean, I, I, I don't think people that like movies would dislike this. I mean, like, if you're into, like, British romantic comedies, you might not like this. But, like, if you kind of dig movies, this is – it's not offensive. It's not appalling. It's, it's, it's a good flick. Yeah. I liked yeah. it. I mean – One of the things I think I sent, well, we were sending like still frames back and forth, <laughs> yeah. is the the the, the proto human man. So when the main <laughs> character, this book, I mean, this film stays pretty close to the book. I think Dustin, you point out to me that there's a scene in the book where the protagonist goes to win back his wife, and he goes to India and, and tells her he loves her. That's cut out of the movie. But yeah. other than that, it's pretty close to the original material. Yes, I would um, say. So, but one of the things is when he turns into the proto human man, they have another actor. Uh, play him uh i forget the guy's name i had it written down the notes here but that actor was a professional dancer and that made me remember that ken russell had an interest in uh ballet and stuff and i don't know how much he had to do with this because i know the casting i think for the most part was due to the original director oh miguel gaudreau is the primal man dancer so that guy was actually like established known dancer a talented dancer i think he died young but i i they had practical effects with this caveman yeah. kind of looking dude. And I really enjoyed the sequence, the whole caveman sequence. And I thought it was amazing because, one, they have him go to the, the, the zoo. I think, is it the Bronx Zoo? Yeah, it's the only film that was been filmed at the Bronx yeah. Zoo, I believe. Yeah, and yeah. he's like kind of like in with the animals, interacting with them like he's hunting them. I'm like, you couldn't even do that today. The stuff he was doing, like running around the elephants. Yeah, and doing was, yeah like, You wouldn't be able to do a film like that with, with real animals. It all yeah. had to be CGI. And oh, side note, this film had some early CGI attempts in it. So the special effects I thought in this film were really good. And yeah, the, the makeup and effect. design was fantastic. Yeah. The production was really good. Yeah. It kind of harkened back to that opening scene in the uh, deprivation tank. Kind of uh, like steampunkish, you know, uh, city. We were talking City of Lost Children, mm, like yeah. maybe influenced after that. But like, the, you what about know? the fly? With, yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Goldblum. Goldblum. Yeah. And Kratz, uh, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. director was Kratzenberg. I remember his name. The guy did the uh, Naked Lunch. Oh, yeah. Um, Katzenberg. Katzen, uh, no, no, no. Damn it. I love the guy. The author. No, Kronenberg. Yeah. Oh, no, Cronenberg. The director. Kronenberg. The director. Yeah, yeah, but it sets the tone for, like... You could kind of see where yeah. some of the 80s and early 90s this is, stuff this, is heading. Yeah. And this is 1980. It's so heading like, into that body horror Yeah, genre. yeah. And it, yeah. it was it was very interesting to see. Like, the, maybe oh, this is the, the genesis of one the of The fly those. thing is actually really, yeah, that, that's that. I, I think, and Cronenberg, I think, loved Russell. I, I, mm-hmm. I think I, I read that somewhere, but like a lot of similarities between the, because, yeah, again, I, I got ahead of myself. It reminded me of Scanners. I yeah, love Scanners. It, it, it was like kind of the same. And, and Scanners was Krat, was um Cronenberg and Altered States. They came out a year apart, but like kind of a very similar feel. It's not quite like slasher. It's not slasher horror, but it's like sci-fi horror. Thriller. You know? Body horror. Yeah, yeah. Kind of body horror. Yeah. Body which, horror, I think, is like, it's yeah. kind of like yeah. and the, the guy's f- body is changing. And, yeah. The fly is the epitome of that whole genre. Oh, it's yeah. a good genre. Yeah. Kratz, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good work, Ryan. Cronenberg. That's a good. Is that your own phrase, body whore? No, no, no. That's like a term that to describe this kind of stuff. No, yeah. it'd be cooler if it was yours. It's it, not. It, it's a good term. I wish. I wish. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it has that. I mean, I, I just thought it was interesting because I felt like the the whole segue with the primal uh, pr- proto man or whatever who's running around because they hired a dancer to do it and, and they didn't use William Hurt. It, it had the potential to be kind of campy, but because they used a dancer, I was like, I dig this. I dig like I thought that 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 actor had the movements down. It was it was it, it, I don't know it captivated. Me. I, I would agree. You know, after thinking about it, I bought into it. You know, we mm-hmm. were talking earlier about like you know the eight, early eighties like movies like Greystone, the Tarzan movie, yeah. where they just put somebody in a monkey suit. Saw and, the theater. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> those type of things were like common, and and this. This kind of went above and beyond that, and, yeah. and they they tried, you know, and I think they did a pretty good job. And, and the music, I think, was uh, nominated for an award. And I was think, it? and I think that Ken Russell, I mean, music is Ken Russell's thing, especially the like more uh, symphony, symphonic, yeah. classical music, and that's what they used in this film. I forget. I can check my notes here who the, uh, the musicians were, but I felt like the music was very good for setting the tone and the mood, like the scenes when they go to the he takes the psychedelic drugs down to Mexico, and it's like they're hitting all the right notes and creating the, the creepy atmosphere. And I could see where like the soundtrack for this was, was really good. 
Cinematography was good too, though. So, like, yeah. just thinking about Mexico when they're talking about the crack, you know, um, when they're going to hallucinate and they're going to, you're going to see a spot and then you'll see a crack and then they shift to this cavern that looks like a crack. Yeah. And then the the, the people are walking in the cavern. Like, that's great cinematography. Yeah. That's I great. I think the original book had him in a forest. Yeah. But they changed it. Yeah. No, I'm saying when, when he was hallucinating, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the crack. So. Yeah, I, I really like that. I also noticed in the film, like, the symbolism of windows. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Open oh, yeah. windows. There were a lot of open windows whenever he was laying in bed or, you know, and, and you know, that's good. Russell's showing, you know, is it peering into the human consciousness? There were open windows, you know, but... Uh, I definitely noticed that at yeah. the end, after he had changed into pro- proto-man and yeah. then changed back and he was home convalescing and his and uh, his wife and friend were talking about him, like, all those scenes were, fr- like, filled from the outside through the windows looking yeah. in and i was like that's that was an interesting and the, choice and in the other episodes it's the other it's the opposite uh, mm-hmm. earlier in the film it's from the from the inside looking out so it was really really interesting you know how russell handled that and, and kind of put his own spin on it yeah it's good it's it's like i enjoyed it it's a yeah. good movie and i and i enjoyed it more than the book i i would agree I, you know it's something that you i would recommend it to somebody i would say like hey check this out you know, especially if you're looking at that kind of time frame of movie, the scan, like you said, the mm-hmm. scanners. I definitely scanners think that time. this is like one of the fire starter type. You know, yeah, this yeah. is like total cult classic. That was a great description of it. It's uh, it's probably one of the crowning movies of Ken Russell, if not his the apex of his career. And I, I feel like the tension between him and Chayefsky maybe is what made this so great. Yeah. The fact that they were totally at odds with each other, but it, it, like Chayefsky, well, just he's a character into himself. Like I want to know more about him, but like that's the biggest issue I think we had with the book is that there I had with the book was you know put that character into the book, you know, give them some depth. That this guy seemed like he had an interesting life and Chayefsky think, himself, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chayefsky. And I think Russell he does that a little bit, like you said, that tension is pulling between him and, mm-hmm. and the screenwriter, and and it kind of shows up in the film, and, and that. It's totally Russell's style yeah. because like the the mon he has like these collages and montages of imageries and they're typically religious and they're typically sexual and he did that layer of the white worm he did that here you know there's like a like a goat like there's a person with a goat head on a cross yeah there's naked women there's like a there's a there's an interesting scene where there's like <laughs> a, a a lizard on the ground in the cave when the guy's tripping out and he turns into like a naked woman who's like also oh that like was awesome i forgot lizard. about the sand like they, they become like almost like uh pompeii you know where you have the people yeah. who are that's frozen right. Frozen from the volcanic explosion, yeah. you know, eruption, covered in ash, and then it just kind of disappears. You know, they, that was amazing cinematography, man. That was really, really. It's a good a flick. Good, yeah, I yeah. Mean, I'd go watch it at a fun theater again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I watched Dick, uh, Dick Smith, with, who is a, li- a legend in makeup and effects. He he's the guy who worked on this. He did The Godfather, The Exorcist, Taxi mm. Driver, Scanners. Yeah. Amadeus, and he did the complex and articulate creatures in the movie. Uh, I think there was another guy that worked. There was another effects guy that worked on this. I think that bowed out or somehow, um, you know, got off the film. No, that part of the film was excellent. You know, any anything with the production or the effects, like for the time, I, I thought it was really well done. Yeah, and the who is the soundtrack that was Academy Award for Best Sound. The nom- nomination for Arthur, I uh, can't pronounce these names, but uh, there was a nomination for a ri- Best Original Score by John Corleano, who also worked on Red Violin. So mm. I, I thought the soundtrack was movie. really great. I-, I feel like Ken Russell just kind of really brought himself to this and took the material and elevated it. Well, it seems like it was his moment, right? Like this, yeah. if, if anything was going to happen for him, this was the time. He just happened to get caught up with, mm-hmm. you know, with, with the wrong... You know, uh, the wrong personality, I guess, as far as and that and the movie flopped. You know, it was not it was not as commercial success. Yeah, but as it has legs. I think it has yeah. legs. Like because I I enjoyed it now all these years later. Oh. I mean, th- there was some parts that are funny. Like I I was telling you, like you know when he the protagonist is in the shower and his feet change and he has like <laughs> Hobbit feet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're like decent yeah. effects, but it was just kind of made me laugh. Yeah, I kind of laughed at the you know the volcano wife at the end. You know, like she. <laughs> Lava, you know. Like, yeah, I felt the ending. The, the ending was not super satisfying, but no. I, I felt like it was like the same ending for the book. So I was like, well, it's just it's the same ending, right? It's, you just kind of wrap it up. Let's, yeah, let's do this. And, it's got the yeah. same problem. Yeah, it does. yeah, it's got a rating of eighty six percent of Rotten Tomatoes, which that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty high. Yeah, it's really good. Um, 
probably higher than the Star Wars movie. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I, it probably resonates, but I mean, like, remember back in the 80s and even early 90s, when people would release a movie, it'd be in the theater for like four months, no matter how bad it was, because <laughs> there was like five movies that would come out a season. Yeah. Squeeze and every it, dime out of it. Yeah, but I mean, like, if they released it on Christmas, it might, I mean, like, there was movies that'd be in the theater for like two, two or three months. Now they're in there for like four or five weeks at best. Yeah. So... Uh, I saw this stupid, um, that wasn't stupid, I saw this Winston uh, Churchill movie, Our Darkest Hour, this week, and I was trying to see it for a few weeks, and I had to, like, it's been out for, like, a month, but it's in no theaters now. Right. It's, been, it's exactly. a month old, so I had to, like, drive 40 minutes to go see it, which is annoying. I don't know. It, it made, it didn't, it didn't lose money. And for a movie to, like, only make, like, uh, how much did it make opening weekend? Like, 140000 174000 yeah. or something For like a $15 that? million dollar movie? Yeah, but then, you know, I guess so, eventually it made nineteen million. But you think about it, that's less than 1% of its budget. 174000 yeah, right. That's less than 1% of its budget it made in its first weekend. Yeah. So that's like a, I mean, like Avengers opening up, making $2 million. It'd be like a two hundred million dollar movie making two million dollars is opening weekend, but still making money. Right now, if a movie opens up and doesn't make a hundred million dollars, it loses money. Yeah. For that kind of budget. So this movie opened up at less than one percent of its budget and still made money, which is you can't do that right now. So mm-hmm. that's that's numbers. <laughs> Those are yeah. numbers. That's not really a podcast thing. It's just just numbers. So I saw that uh, William Hurt. I think when he was doing yeah. his auditions, when he when he met with um, Ken Russell. They sat down in some room. There was like just like there was like no oh, yeah. chairs. It was just like That's a radiator, story. yeah, or something like that. And so uh, <laughs> Ken Russell like sits down in this radiator, and he like his pant his pant legs come up, and he's got Betty Boop socks on. And and William Hurt says that uh, when he saw the Betty Boop socks, he's like, "Okay, I'll do this." Yeah, he's in. <laughs> I'm in. He did, he did good. He had a, yeah. he had a, like Har- early Harrison Ford like qualities to me in this film. Yes, I don't know. He looks like Harrison Ford. Th- yeah, it, it, it's something something like that. I got this. No, but know, it's, it's a rare beer. It's sure. Yeah, it it it, it reminded me of that. It's like, the last beer in the cooler. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He, so, no, he, yeah. He had a certain. Okay, this is the. Uh, by the way, there's one le- one beer left in the cooler. It's unmarked, and <laughs> we're gonna. No, there's no label. <laughs> mm. Triple three X's on it. I think. That's really interesting it, taste. This tastes like malty almost. Almost like a pretzel beer, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a sip of some kind of. Oh, man. It's good. It's good. It's yeah, good. I thought the casting was good. I, I guess Ken Russell didn't do the original casting, but um, yeah. I, I enjoyed all the performances. The the wife. Let's get to the wife's performance, though. Come on. Did you guys notice, like, whenever she acted, she had to move around? It was very, like, theater for me. You know, well, like. That character in the, in the book, I thought that that character, like, the wife, she felt very flat. Like, you were saying the characters yeah. were thin. There was times where Chayefsky just had the the character saying like one word responses that were and they were redundant. Yeah, and I thought the wife kind of got shortchanged. Then occasionally she would expound on more thoughtful things, and he gave her a little more depth. But th- the wife suffered from the original writing. I think. Yeah, I, I'm the type of person though. Like on performances, I get caught up on like when they start doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And if you watch that film, like she is constantly moving. Like for her, like drama is like moving around while she's saying the dialogue. Mm. And it just started to, like, annoy the hell out of me. Like, I was, sit still, you know, less is more. Um, I had real problem with her in the film. I wonder if that's what Chayefsky didn't like, because, like, supposedly he complained that the dialogue was hurried. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's, like, the pacing is what he, although I felt like the book read like a thriller. Even though you were getting caught up in all this jargon and stuff, yeah. I felt like the pacing was fast. And I felt like I did feel like the movie had real momentum. I felt like the, once this thing got going, it just like it kept going. Next thing, next Didn't thing. Did you feel like it was thing. very lin- linear though? Like, you know, yeah, like, but it, like there's it, no real twist and turns here. Yes. I mean, I have the proto human, I guess. Yeah. You know, like that changed that. But up to that point, it's like, here we go. You know, yeah. we're going right to that point. You're sort of like getting on a train. Yeah. And you're just going to ride it to this destination. And then, like, I guess the, the proto human mm-hmm. is the twist, but other than that that's enjoyable in it in a movie i think because you have a finite amount of time but in a book eh, take me somewhere yeah <laughs> god this beer is interesting how did you no, guys no, but no, well, how did you guys no. like the effects at the end you think or did you like basically you like the effects i mean well, the, the effects, at the end they really amp let's it up put it in context end. you know i think it was very well done i think the bubbling on the arm the sleeve that was created like yeah that was really, really good. Like that was, yeah. I, I bought it, you know. And the makeup um, was stellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I, about like the more like CGI and like animation? Like they, I think they had some animation or some kind of like. It is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's the era. I mean, yeah. like, I think they were. I think anim. There was. I, I yet. I mean, it all is kind of. It wasn't the worst I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, I mean they used that the the drop 
you know, the ink blots and the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Okay. I get it. You know, that's what they had at the time that didn't blow my mind, but I thought the makeup like it was, was outstanding and CGI should be used sparingly, but it's, it, it is work in some context. I just hate it when people use it as a crutch to make a yeah. movie work. Which Absolutely. Is common. I believe that in an article that was written a few years back, they said that Chayefsky was one of the first people to have a movie come out where the screenwriter had his name above the title. Hmm. He was oh, like okay. one of the only screenwriters they have that. And then everyone started doing it like, like a Stephen King, Bears, well, Dune, a Stephen King I, story. Like Dune think, and... Well, no, but that's authors. Yeah. This is oh, screenwriting. Uh, I see. So I yeah. think he might have be, might be the only one, well, at least when this article came out, the only one to have that notoriety. Like, huh. like you see that with authors. Yeah, their, their yeah. name gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. The more famous they get, like Stephen King. But I don't, like, you don't necessarily see like the new Steven Spielberg coming out with saying like Steven Spielberg's blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Well, I don't. Do you guys have anything else to add, or we can no? Or, I think we're good. No, right. Let's go see our, it. Yeah. Uh, let's do our final comments and just like our star rating. So I'll go to Dustin. What? How many stars would you give this? I'd say this was, you know, four star for me. Like, uh, go see it. Have fun. It's it. It's fun. It's what a movie should be. It's enjoyable. It gets a little weird. It gets a little funny. But I, I think it's much better than the book. And, and it's yeah. this rare, like you said, oh, it's this rare occasion where you know the movie is actually better than the book. So yeah. Um, All right, Wilk. On, on the star scale, I feel like five stars means that if you don't see this movie, you're an asshole. And three stars means I like it, but I don't care if you see it. I would give this movie four stars. Like four stars mean I really liked it, and I feel like you'd like it too. But I won't be pissed if you don't like it. Yeah. So that that's where the four stars means to me. I I, I would hardly rec- I feel like most people would like this movie. If you're listening to this podcast, you'll probably like this movie. What the fuck? You know. I mean. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I I'd recommend yeah. it. I wouldn't say five stars because there's plenty of things you could not like about it. I guess. But like it's definitely a solid four star '80s sci-fi horror flick, which is. uh Pretty cool shit. I completely agree with yeah. with you guys. Four stars for me as well. Everything I said before, I think it's a, it's 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 Ken Russell's crowning achievement. As far as I know, I haven't seen all of his movies, but to me, uh, this is way better than The Layer of the White Worm. Um, and I think this is like this is Ken Russell come like coming into his own, and the tension with Chayefsky really benefited this production. And um, yeah, you, you're just you're gonna like this, and you're gonna like it more than the book. I think for most people. And um, even though Chayefsky has a strong reputation for his screenwriting and for his dialogue, his effort here was uh, probably, you know, it was it was bettered by, by Russell. So, all right. Uh, other than that, if they want to follow Wilk on your other podcast, that's avoidmurder.com, I believe. Yeah, avoidmurder.com. And if they want to check out uh, Dustin Declines VN, I Decline. That's i-decline.com. Give us a listen. All right. And, you know, check our podcast out at uh, www.nodeodorant.com. So look us up on the interwebs and check our uh, whatever. I will eat your soul. (laughs) All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, that's fun. For more information on the topics discussed in this episode or to read our show notes and find us on social media, visit nodeodorant.com. For more information on Ryan Sean O'Reilly and his various works of fiction, visit ryanshawnoreilly.com. The theme music for this podcast was written by John Doyle from the band I Decline. You can visit him at i-decline.com. Voiceover for this podcast was provided by me, Margaret O'Reilly. Well, that concludes our episode. We hope you've learned a lot. Again, thanks for listening to our show. And always, always remember, there is no deodorant in outer space. Is that good? All right. That's me. Dustin, let's hear you. Let me move closer. I move my seat. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to be by their microphone for some reason. <laughs> Hello. How That's are we doing? Too loud. Check one, two. Check one, two, one, two, okay. one, two. Drinking lots of beer All on right. Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, make sure you eat crunchy food while you need a vanilla <laughs> wafer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, wait. We're not finished vanilla wafer.
Laura told me to get, put some blankets and pillows in the, in the bedroom downstairs for you. I'm like, where am I going to get them? She's like, I'll just get them for him. Like, okay. <laughs> Thank God you're married. <laughs> no, I'm like to a lovely woman. I'm like, where? Like, I feel like any place I grab pillows or blankets from, she'd yell at me for saying it's the wrong one. So we'll point they would sure. be the yeah. wrong ones. They they would be. So all right. Hmm. In five, in four, in three, in two, in one. I was in the. I don't know. Let's start again. <laughs> Hey Ryan, did what, you did well? Go, well, do it. Would you got a point? No. Okay. What did you have for dinner tonight? You said you ate on the road. What did you eat? Uh, I think I just stopped at Subway. We got pizza or something later on, right? We had pizza. How did you no, guys? No, but no, well, how did you guys missed. like the effects at the end?